Yes, sir. It is visible. Yeah. So we'll start. We'll we'll start the session, sir. Good afternoon to one and all present here for the today's uh, post lunch session. Uh, I now take the privilege of uh, welcoming and introducing uh, our resource person for uh, the present session. Uh, Professor Ravinder uh, Henry is an independent consultant. He has a doctoral degree from VIT Vellu in electric electronic engineering. His area of work is in brain implants. He has a master of science in RFN microwave engineering and photonics from Technical University Dresden, Germany, and masters of science in medical systems engineering from Otto von Guericke University, Germany. He also has a master of arts in sociology from University of Pune. He had completed his Bachelor of Engineering from University of Madras and currently pursuing Master of Science in Radiation Therapy from Fashoschul Wiener Neustadt, Austria. He has played many roles in his professional career as a research professor, chief technology officer, and director in both academia and industries. His thrust areas of work has been in transforming the education system, specifically in school and higher education by making it more applied intelligence oriented. I now request you to take over the session, sir. The session is all yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a, a difficult slide after lunch. Everybody's here to listen to this talk. So I will split my talk into two parts. Today, we will uh, try to go for the second part of the title, that is perspective of creativity. And in the next uh, slot, that is after a couple of days, we will go into the first part of the title, that is how to improve time and passion among the teachers and students. So I once again uh, thank the professor for welcoming me. So we'll get into the topic. So today, uh, today we will go more into the technicality of uh, creativity, how it is supposed to be there, how it is there in the current scenario, and how it may change in the coming days, and how all these are interrelated. So that is the basic aspect. So my contents of the talk for the next two uh, slots for this particular topic will be divided into five parts. So that is the contemporary situation, the current situation, to evolution and the cognitive abilities, how uh, cognitive technology as such is evolving. The third part will be creativity. What is creativity? What is uh, creativity process? And how to nurture creativity through pedagogy? and uh, what how these are related to your cognitive abilities that is your passion and motivation and what are the uh, pedagogical uh, pedagogical changes that should be brought about in the management ed education in general and specifically uh, management discussion and in the next slot we will also have a small discussion at the end so these are the five broad categories and the topics will go here and there and uh, we will dwell into details of creativity today. It will be more a scientific part today. And the second part will be more about application part. Today it is both about the basic science and the application part. And the next slot we'll talk about how to imply uh, creativity into your day-to-day -day curriculum and how to motivate oneself further. Yeah. So this is the overall idea of the content. Plan. So what is the current environment? Current environment is the post uh, still COVID is there, but I've written post COVID-19 situation, but still uh, the COVID situation has totally transformed our way of living, thought process, and also the work culture and especially education. Uh, even if most of the things are opened up in Indian context, the most important thing that is still to be opened up is the education institutes. So all other things are able to function at least to 50% of their capacity. But when it comes to education, everything has gone online. So what are the implications of online education? And uh, how creativity is going to play an important role in this transformation is one aspect. Recently, the government of India had announced about the national education policy and how it is also going to impact. So what is the only solution that is post COVID, even if the COVID is lost, online education will not go away. So it is going to be combination of offline and online. Even if the vaccine comes or not, it doesn't matter. But people have realized both in the industry as well as in academia, that the majority of the things can be worked from being at home because it saves a lot of money in terms of infrastructure for the companies. At the same time, even for academia, there are many of the subjects which can be taught online. Few of them cannot be taught online, like medicine or engineering, where you have to physically do things. Since in Indian education system, applying what is learned is already lacking. It has become more complicated. 
So the only way ahead is blended learning or hybrid learning, whatever you may call it, which is offline plus online. So there are three pillars to blended learning in this context. One is creativity. Creativity is there everywhere. So it is creativity is again. Two, experiential learning. So you cannot just listen to online lectures and do nothing. And it is very difficult to motivate an adult, say in the age group of 18 to 25 or 18 to 30, to continuously sit online and listen to lectures. It has its own impact. So how to apply what they learn or what they listen online is going to be the part of the experiential learning. And the third component of mental learning will be how to take education home, how to take school, school in the sense it can be college, school, anything, anything. So primary to higher education, every aspect of education the COVID situation has brought is how to engage the children or the students, whether at the higher education level or the entry level uh, education level. So how to do that? So that is going to be another important aspect. And even in this COVID situation, it is only technology which saved many of the systems to be alive. Without technology, it is not possible to survive such a pandemic. The same thing which would have happened in Spanish flu, say 1920, they never had these kind of facilities. Once they have these, these kind of facilities, only we could make a deep impact, right? So like 1971 was the first invention of the Intel microprocessor when one my heart's a thousand transistors that totally transform how we compute, communicate and control things, right? ECQ, so electronic uh, e communication, controlling and computations. So all these three things totally changed 1971. And then by 1984, the mobile technology transformed totally how we do that, but it took time, almost 16 years to take shape in the early 2003 or 2004. So then came around 2010 when the speed of the internet and the connectivity increased. So everybody can have, can hold an ARM 7 or ARM 9 based, a handheld platform that is a smartphone or a tab or a laptop so that it become easy to be remotely placed and also to communicate. So the technology is deeply impacting our lifestyle, our thought process. So, and that is in, in return impacts our creativity also. So that is some, something that is we are missing in our uh, curriculum nowadays. Even if the regulatory bodies have tried to change the syllabus and everything, end of the day, it is only more service oriented uh, uh, pedagogy rather than a creative oriented pedagogy. So how to adopt technology as part of your teaching and learning process, that is going to be very important. And the next important aspect in this current environment is the role of artificial intelligence and machine learning. For example, uh, many of the good universities, the top notch universities in the world, which are highly ranked, because we know very well, not even a single university is ranked in top 300. We can boast about many things. In reality, most of the world leading technology, including the vaccine is coming from the Western universities, which we have to accept at any cost. So how this technology is going to deeply impact uh, like the role, what, what is the role of artificial intelligence as such and how machine learning will impact the teaching learning scenario it is already impacted. We are using um, GTAC or Zoom or all these things, but they can become more and more intelligence through the evolution of the search engines that will become more and more easier. Yes, it is 100% true. You cannot teach everything online, but it has to be combined creatively with the offline uh, delivery also. So what is the role of the teacher coming? Because when you are teaching online, a student can go to the WhatsApp, like when I am talking now, many of you may be engaged in your own activities. So you could have checked something else, listen for five minutes, so the attention span and how to make it. So a teacher becomes more of a role of aggregator, collecting information from different places and putting to the students so that they can practically implement it. And for that, the traditional way of the teacher has to be ahead of the field then only the student will follow it because he can easily get access to all the leaders in the field or the best professors in the field free of cost online on YouTube or any other forums. There are many forums. So the, 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 the recent developments in the online boom and the number of service providers has given them free of knowledge to quality, quality material. For example, you can take electronics, Milman Hall case. If Milman Hall case is delivering live lecture, why should I read somebody else's book? <laughs> that is a way to look at it. So if the world leader is delivering a lecture, the best of the best is, and I'm getting it free. So how at the local level, I can be a good teacher to guide and to be a part of it. So for that, the only part I am looking at it, because I worked in both academia and industry, it has to be a leading researcher, not for the sake of degrees, but for real research, right? So that is what I'm meaning. So this is the current situation. And in this situation, we are having a topic with the specific focus on 
a management education that we'll see in the second part. So what is the impact of this online education and where it is happening? For example, nowadays from primary level to higher education, everything is online. For example, if you take engineering or you cannot do, you cannot create a doctor just by teaching online and showing a life surgery some thousand kilometers away or 500 kilometers away. Unless you go and feel the patient, understand the patient, you cannot cure the patient. Same with engineering. Already our education system has been uh, going through the burden that is 16 lakh engineers pass out, but only two lakhs are employable. And, uh, and, and, and the, the attitude and the aptitude are both uh, difficult because they don't apply what they learn. They buy heart and pass the examination system. And that has not created many creators, but we have created many service providers. That is why 90% of Indian industry is more into service rather than product development, right? Even if we have so many service companies, we don't have a single product development companies, right? So why, if, if that was the impact of a face-to-face -face education, how online education is going to impact uh, the, the student as a learner or a teacher, as a deliverer? So that is going to depend upon the amount of screen time, but screen time is correlated to your mental health, like games is addictive. So there are different classification. I have just represented a few of them as per the UNICEF data. So the, the, the screen time is going to have deep impact on your thought process. It can give you kind of a depression, it can give you kind of anxiety and hostility, attention deficit, higher, hyperactive disorder, and there are a number of things that can be correlated to uh the impact of digital media on online education so there has to be a right balance between online education and offline education to implement through online and offline activity we need creativity that is where this topic is going to be uh, very interesting that is in the second part so if you look at this 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 is the impact of digital media has been now classified under international classification this is icd 11 so you can go through with it. I've given the reference. You can just Google and find out and read the documents. A very interesting document. There are many papers, but this is one is very interesting. So the digital uh, online education is going to have a deep impact on the sociological aspect. What is digital sociology? Uh, basically, when we interact offline, we are a different personality. But when we interact online, we are a different personality, irrespective of the age group. We are 50 year old guy can act like a 24 year old guy on online or a Facebook or digital media or social media or network media. And a 20 year old can behave like a 50 year old. So he can manipulate his personality online. So, and how he interacts is different. That is digital sociology. And the digital psychology, if, if, a, if, if a young kid is going to be online, say out of 16 hours to 17 hours, how the person is going to respond that is, that is going to impact his thought process. So how to understand the thought process, how to understand the digital psychology, what he's trying to portray online or how he's going to behave online, then we call it as neuroscience. So the neurological aspect have to be understood. And that is, we can put all these aspects into three broader category to understand what is the impact a purely online based delivery is going to have on an individual learner or a user or a teacher or a student. One, it is going to have a deep impact on the behavior and the second part, it is going to deeply impact their brain development. Yeah? And the third, these two factors are going to influence their performance output. See, uh, it's, it's a big, big misconception that by learning by theory, vomiting out, you can get a degree in India. But at the end of the day, if you're not able to apply, it becomes a problem. And that problem is now compounded because of online education. You are missing the practical part totally. These two has to be balanced. So how, if a student is going to 24 hour watch online simulations and online lectures and online videos, he gets bored. His attention is going to come down. And when, it is, when he, is, he or she is compelled to do it, it is going to change his behavior indirectly. For example, what we call emotional computing, by reading a WhatsApp message without seeing the person instantaneously can change your mood. Similarly, uh, your emotions can be manipulated by the messages which are being shown around in the digital media. So that is the behavioral impact we are talking about. And how it is going to develop, uh, influence your brain development. In terms of brain development, you, you, one, 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 one have to understand we have five senses. And if you're not able to properly utilize all these five senses, we cannot understand what's going on around us. 
just using visual and hearing is not going to solve the problem. It has to be physically touched, felt, and then to be delivered. So the behavioral impact and the brain development, both are going to influence the academic performance of a student. So we have to understand a little bit about psychology and neuroscience, because these two factors are going to determine the net output based on the digital input. You are bombarding the students with online, you are bombarding the students with the entertainment, you are bombarding the students with digital media. So all these things put together, how they are going to impact the total uh, performance that is going to be the output. The next important thing will be in digital, uh, the influence of digital media is going to be the uh, screen-based uh, time. This is one important factor. The amount of time that a person spends online determines the influence on his uh, cognitive abilities, right? So we have positive screen time. These are the three subdivisions, very easy to understand. And we have negative screen time. And that is for different age group, they have said how much hours one should spend online or offline. So that is one part. But post COVID and post NEP, so the education system is going to go towards a combination of online and offline. So that is hybrid learning or blended learning. And the three important components of this hybrid learning or blended learning will be creativity, experiential learning, and school. How the educational institute are able to take the education or schooling, the, the process of schooling to their homes so that they are engaged more, right? So we'll come to some basics of creativity. So basically the creativity word originates from the Latin word creo, which is something to make or to do something or create something. So basically, generally it is accepted in the pedagogy. Uh, it is now part of the B.Ed. or M.Ed. education that the 4C model of creativity by Professor Kaufman, which has been widely accepted around the world. So he talks about four, four aspects of creativity. One is little C, another one is pro C, professional and mini and big. So the little one is talking about Every day, how we are able to solve and how we are able to express, that is one kind of creativity. The professional one is all about, we are, what as a professional we do at our professions, how we are able to handle the situations outcome. And the third important aspect is the mini C, that is about experiencing insights and how one a person get transformed towards learning. And the fourth will be big C, where you are considered, you are an expert in a field, by similar minded people or you are the leader in the field, you lead the pack, you invent, you create, you go from the front and everybody else follows. So that is from his paper, it can be downloaded freely online, anybody can download that. So if you can see that there is a systematic way of integrating this creativity from little c to big c and across this, the four, the mini c, the creation, which is basically about crossing each step. So the big C is the one that everybody tries to achieve. Then depending upon the different levels, we fall into different categories and where we utilize most of our creative solutions. So here we have to understand uh, one important aspect, how the brain works and how the mind processes things. So it is like a typical robot, it's an AI system. So where you have some sensors, where you have some actuators, where you respond, and there are some processes which are happening in your brain and you are given some, uh, you are born with some natural intelligence and you are trained in the school or a school to perform certain tasks or look at certain tasks. Because this topic we are going to discuss in the next part, whether it is right to alternatively uh, change the creativity from a non-creative person to a creative person, whether it is right to what happens to free will. What is about the free choice? I want to be like this. Why you are trying to change me? So the free choice, the free will. And these two aspects we'll discuss when it comes to curriculum. So that is in the second part, where we have to understand how to utilize creativity, that we don't deter the identity. We don't bring about the identity crisis in the student, but instead we encourage him to uh, uh, hang on to his creative ideas without losing his identity. So this is a very important discussion that has to be included in our pedagogy that we'll discuss in the second part. So basically we express these uh, inputs, that is natural intelligence, what is being trained and the behavioral aspects. We process it and try to represent it and give it as a figurative representation. So we try to transform the information, which we express as emotion, reasoning, 
attention, perception, memory, language, etc. Right. So that is how the brain works. The simple input system, output system, where there is a loop to compare it and evaluate it. So the creative process, there are many theories. You can go through it online. Each one is very interesting. Uh, sometimes uh, I have listed only the major important aspects, not everything, not in every detail. This we'll see in the second part, but just to have an introductory aspect is very important. One is incubation. Incubation meaning a, how you are able to hold to an idea and try to develop the idea over a period of time. Convergent and divergent thinking, this is a very important concept because when we try to measure creativity of a person, when we try to evaluate a creativity of a person, nowadays we don't go for questionnaire. Yes, we do this kind of questionnaire, but we can also do functional magnetic resonance, fMRI, and then plot which part of your brain is very active and we can precisely say what kind of person is more creatively able and what kind of person is more creatively not able and that is where education schooling and training comes in to fill this gap so we also have a new buzzword called neuro hr but i don't want to use such things but simply it is mapping which area of the brain is very active for which people and how to measure this divergent thinking because how we think our state of mind is a kind our state of mind is not constant it changes time to time and how different parts of the brain gets activated and how to measure them so that's a different aspect of it so we have to talk about this and that is where divergent you have a single focus or multiple solutions simple way to understand then we have the preemptive phase and the exploiting in the gene pool process that's another way of looking at creativity there are multiple theories but if you go for the scientific process uh, then we should look at how to measure it, how to evaluate it, and how to interpret those results. Right. So we have two different frame of reference in bioassociation. Then we have the horning process, counterfactual thinking. Then we have the Kyos and order interface. I think the way India works is a very good example of Kyos. And then the neuroeconomic framework. That also another important theory. Then we talk about reinforcement learning, cognitive neuroscience, and neurotransmission. This is more scientific and technical, right? So if you look at the psychological aspect, it was Piquet who proposed the different kind of uh, uh, how the psychology develops and how we approach knowledge creation through creativity, right? That is imagination. And these pillars have been studied by Piquet, and he is the world leader who proposed this concept and now this has been followed. Yes, some people agree, many don't agree, like any other part of science. So how these, starting from sensory motor skills, free operation skills, concrete operations, then we go to formal operations. This is one of the foundational theory. Then we come to the Kurdovich play pyramid. It's another way to look at it. Because when you want to design a curriculum or when you want to design a toy or when you want to design a any aspect of bringing together art, artistic way of looking at things and the technological perspective this is a very good understanding. This is for children. So there are four aspects, social, physical, sensory, and aspects. So he put it in four, four aspects. That is the construction aspect, sensory challenge. Uh, the challenge is the main focus. Then we have the fantasize. So construction, sensory, and fantasy. So these are the four aspects of Kurgovich. So then, when we look at the how the child when in the formative years what they learn at the younger age is being expressed when they grow up so to change it a little bit in between is where education and training comes into picture right that is what they do whatever their choice of their choice and whatever the choice of their activity is going to reflect when they grow up as an adult right and there may be plus or minus that is because of education and training so now we'll come back to what is the status of education in India. So we are all well aware. We are not the world leader in this, but we are the world exporter of a number of students going around the world to study and also making a mark. There can be different reasons. It can be economical reasons, but whoever is may not get an opportunity here goes and performs very well, and we are very proud of them. Blah blah blah. Everything is fine. But end of the day, our education system, whether even if it NDP, if there's a new education policy. If it is not implemented properly, it is not going to take us anywhere. Because in recent last one decade, we have been talking about a powerful country. We have to become Atma Nirbhar. We have to make products. Then it, you have to change your total education. How, how 
it has to be independent and how to make each individual independent so then we have to split them into groups who will go where and we should give the choice to the individual rather than forcing on them so uh, we have been talking in the last five to six years about manufacturing industry is going down because you for example you want a car company you want for example you take any single mri machine you go to a um, hospital you want a magnetic resonance imaging machine you have to get it from siemens or mitsubishi or toshiba or philips right so we don't have an indian company manufacturing because you don't invest in r and even if you want to follow the chinese model of manufacturing they are the world leaders we can make blame them 20 years ago that they were copying from the west but they have transformed their industry and education system to invent on their own so they are able to lead in manufacturing so are you going to replace them so that is one thing second what you have done for the future for example a covid like situation has come up so how we are going to address this situations using technology right so we have in our media too much hype talking about vaccine coming from this university that university but when you don't have any history of r and d you cannot do that in one day or two days or one year or two years because you need 100 years of investment and guy investment and grooming over research so what is it that is going to deeply impact our education system and what is it that we have to do for the future generation what are the things so a country cannot become a powerful country or a society if you focus only on services right so it has to be if there are 100% it has to be split 30 30 30 30 so service industry has to work manufacturing industry has to work product industry has to work and there has to be at least a 10 to 5% investment into the futuristic industry and for all these industries service industry manufacturing industry product development and futuristic industry you the it is the education system which is going to supply the human resource so if the human resource has to be groomed well so what are the changes pedagogical changes we have to do because after 1991 or 1984 with the it revolution in india so you were able to because of english speaking skills low cost english speaking skilled laborers were able to sustain the it service industry right and bpo or kpo whatever you put it but you were not able to sell say something like a microsoft office why there is not a single product yes you can boast about apps but you didn't develop the app right but end of the day so what else you have done other than providing service right Uh, so how many products that we use in our day to day life are invented in india are made in india or indian university it's very less and that is clearly reflected in the number of universities or the ranking list in our research or papers it can be in any field it can be in science engineering technology or management it doesn't matter yes even in the 2% category some indians are there but a population of 130 crores which is boasting about high tech development and infrastructure and high fi colleges and universities where is it what is it that you are doing right so these things has to be addressed at the education level so this is what i listed in terms of population and area occupied so we are occupying so much less area with the maximum almost 16% of the world population with 2% area and you are having 140 crores billion brilliant banks um, but the output seems very very less compared to a small country like israel yeah you talk about money but then you claim you are super poor so where is that investment going how so many colleges and universities are not able to produce those kind of rnds in any fit for that matter and why and that is where we are lacking in applied intelligence the issue is not with the industries the issue is with employability of the students coming out of educational institutions right so uh, so this is the small brief about education we looked at the creativity we look at about some of the issues of the education now we'll have some story about science if it is boring please forgive me for that and if you don't agree with me and all the points i say it's very welcome but please don't bash me <laughs> we are open to say um, but it's always uh, it's always mutual so we'll have a small story because we have to understand what is the linkages between all these things and what is the role of management in this because many of you are brilliant professors and teachers and students from big universities and big colleges you know more than me about uh, management so i'm not here to teach you management because it's illogical even to share my experience in logic but when we talk about what is the link what is it science what is technology what is engineering and how these are connected and why management is the linking process how it is being linked right that's very important so we all know the history this history would have studied in from younger class but i'm telling in a short story if you don't like it's fine so our university is 13.7 billion years old and some other calculations so 14.8 billion years 
and our Earth is 4.6 billion years. And then if you see life on Earth, it's around 3.6 billion years old, single cell prokaryotic. Then you come towards uh, so the, our species, which especially the Homo, the family of Homo, um, uh, genus Homo, it's around 2.5 million years. And the modern human beings are roughly 200,000 years, so not much. Right? But if you see our brain de development, it goes back around 550 million years ago. So still today, our brain replicates the basic architecture of a fish. Uh, we'll see that. So if you see, we have different species. We are not one species. So our hybridization is one of the responsible for the growth in the cerebral cortex because cerebral cortex is very much important for your creative thinking and analytical abilities. And so as I told you, over 500 million years to 10,000 years ago, so starting from a fish to a reptile to a bird to a mammal to an ape and to the modern human beings, we, we, we have the same brain structure. But what is changing, if you see, observe here, is this part is changing. The number of sulca and gyra is growing, and this component is increasing day by day. And that is, that, that is what gives you the high intellectual ability, and creativity is the basis of that intellectual ability. You can actually measure that creativity also, right? So, and whatever happened in this 500 million years to 10,000 years ago, is replicated every time a new child is born in the mother's womb, and that is how the brain develops. It actually goes through these different phases, right? So, if you compare it, the only thing that changes more is not the midbrain, high brain, and the forebrain, but what changes is this particular part, right? The human part. This particular part is growing so much that is cerebral neocortex or the surface cortex is grown so much that you are having multiple abilities, and that is one of the reasons our brain is one of the heaviest brain also. So, uh, and the number of billion neurons, more than 100 billion neurons are making it. So it's, it's a huge brain, it's a huge activities, right? So we know the story, what the brain does. So I will not repeat anything here, it's more little technical, but we know it is a place for our mind as well as for that control actions, communication, control, and computation. So all the three things happens there and we are able to perform physical actions and we are able to think and analyze and dream and do, which is mind, which is not physical, which is not tangible. Right, that is the case. So these are some basic parameters of brain weighs between 1,350 grams for adult female to 1,400 grams in adult male. That is because of number of interconnections is the basic brain structure, blah, blah, blah. So that's, we're not going to it. But what is very important, we always talk about the gray matter. So what is the gray matter and how it is actually determining the computing network in your brain and how the process of thinking, creativity or imagination works. You know, all these are interrelated. So <laughs> the cerebral cortex, this part, is going to play the most important role in analysis of everything, right? That is very important. So, uh, so this is where we have, this is the basic idea we have. So the decision making, these are the five sensory aspects and the most important is the frontal lobe. All four, five of them work together to give you the ability to think, right? And we have, uh, many aspects of the brain and the five senses are very important and how we coordinate and make and every aspect for motion control which is in the bigot philosophy uh, bigot psychology also so now whatever they propose some of the theories can be proved by functional magnetic resonance imaging by giving a task and then observing which part of the neurons respond and how these actions are done right so that can be easily done now in this context so this human species which is 200,000 years old on earth which is very young, one of the youngest species, we are able to think and make decisions. So what is science? So science is the ability of the human species to use its five senses and 1,400 gram brain to understand the universe, what's happening around it, and then able to put it in a systematic analysis. You know, that is what is science. So there can be only new two sciences, natural science and social and behavioral science, right? So basically we try, we use these five senses in our brain to understand what's happening around us including the whole universe and try to put it systematically in a systematic analysis and observation and that is becomes science right that is a basic understanding of science, the layman's definition and why science is becoming more and more important because we used to have uh, different aspects like modern physics and classical physics uh, biological science and biotechnology but now the, the, the boundaries are very less right for example if you take natural language processing most of the people work in lang natural language process, like when you talk to talk to a Google um, Alexa or something, you are able to, she's able to reply because you're able to process your audio. 
and then she is able to give a re reply back because the software inside is working on replicating the algorithm that is it is able to understand your natural way of pronouncing your word and then process it and execute right nlp so we have to find the common linkages in the science right and that is the why it is going there right then there are different branches of science that is okay blah 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 then what is technology so technology is basically there can be only four technologies only in the indian engineering system we split them into so many branches yeah but logically speaking there can be only four either you can process the information in your brain that is information technology you can process where this action is taking place that is bio that is biotechnology then it can process the material that is artificial we create things the material technology so today it is about nanomaterial so we call it as nanotechnology then comes the most important part that is the cognitive technology the ability to think the ability to it's the application part of the cognitive science so there can be only four that is bits uh, bang bits atoms neurons and genes so these four things converge together that is bits zeros and ones information technology genes biotechnology materials or atoms bang atoms and then your neurons so bang bits atoms neurons and genes so all the four has to converge together to have an impact so what is technology technology is about development of tools so tools and crafts which will benefit the human kind right so we have different techniques and productions and systems then we have a technology timeline because if you avoid technology you cannot create industries we have evolved as a human species from different technologies starting from stone age bronze age iron age roman science printing industrial age 1900s then we came to the it age 1971 then we talked about the nano age around 2012 so if you take indium pentium 4 came 2004 but the number of transistor accounts has gone too much because we are able to reduce the distance between source and the drain in case of a MOSFET. That is the nano age. That's the beginning of the nano around 2002. And then we have the Cogno age. That is where the maximum investment is into the brain research and how it is being interfaced like brain machine interfaces and how our AI, AI is a sub part of cognitive technology. And then the real space age will start from 2050 when we are able to do all the four. So you cannot say no to technology. You have to accept technology and integrate into the system, right? So what is engineering? So engineering is the process of building technology. So you can have only four, but you cannot have n number of things. So today the boundary between science, engineering, and technology is very limited, right? So uh, basically, uh, science ability to understand what's happening, technology development of applications, and engineering is about building those technology. For example, once you have one you understand how to fly once you can build different ways of flying vertical lift horizontal lift right so air drag drain, whatever you want to do you can do have fun with it so it is the science engineering and technology set and these are all interconnected by mathematics when you make it as industry you come into management right so that is the linkages between all these aspects so so if you take indian education system so where is the problem and what is it is facing now we are exporting engineers, we are exporting doctors, nurses, accountants, all kinds of jobs around the world. So you cannot develop a country, you cannot become rich just by exporting human resource. You have to export goods, you have to export products. You cannot just provide, somebody invents, unless somebody invents, you cannot wait to service it, right? So it has to be mix and match. So you cannot put all your effort only towards making clerks. You have to put or distribute the efforts in such a way that it is equally split among us. So we know about how education developed in India. We started from ancient age, we went to the middle age, British India and modern India after independence. Everybody knows what's happening because most of you are teachers and well-read professors and institute owners, so whatever it is. So that education is being challenged now in India. Others have changed, but we have not changed because of COVID, because of online. A student has the opportunity to listen to an MIT open course fair and the course on a video which is far better than a video which can be seen by an Indian university. So out of 100 universities, one is good, but not all the 90. Uh, so a course that gives you free and the lecture quality is far higher, right? So the, the opportunity for the student is more. So in an online or in a combination of online offline, how are these educational institutes going to compete with this kind of quality? And what are the improvements that has to be made? So this has come and this is a turning point that we have to realize we have to change our system toward the positive, right? 
So this all we understand, no need to go. But what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem uh, is not just about buildings and teachers and students, right? It's about the it's about environment you provide, and it's also about the infrastructures, because our education system cannot just go on make service professional ninety percent, ten percent researchers and doctors. It has to equally create thirty percent here, thirty percent here, thirty percent. So is our curriculum and structure and pedagogy, the method of teaching, is evenly distributed that it is able to generate all kinds of people. That's a big question mark, right? Still, we are not into interdisciplinary and multi deeper research. Still, we are resentful because our industry is like that. But today, industry is becoming industry four because everything can be done in IoT. You can collect the data remotely and then do it. So you, you don't need human beings. Many of the software companies from the manufacturing companies because of COVID have realized Robots are better workers. You need only out of 10, say four employees to manipulate the robots rather than having them because every process is being automated or industries are trying to automate because this is not going to be one COVID. There is going to be more viruses. More we make problems with mother nature, more it is going to retaliate. And that is going to continue. And it will not stop just with the COVID. No, it's, it's not going to stop. So it's the only way to safeguard the interest is only through use of technology. So how will you create an environment online and offline? How will you... Now, some colleges are like big, Kalyan, huge buildings, but without proper infrastructure in the terms of machines and requirements. So how to have a centralized facility and a distributed facility with the student so that these things can be interrelated so that you can have a hybrid learning and run, right? So that ecosystem has to be addressed. So there are so many issues which I have listed by referring different papers, what is lacking in Indian education system. So it's a purely mark-based system. Even if you adopt NEP, unless you have passionate teachers and students that NEP is not going to make any changes still out of a class of 60 engineers or say BCom, BA, whatever it is, MBA, everybody will end up in the, in the, in the doorstep. Yeah, we talk about app and then entrepreneurship, blah, blah, blah. But in India, entrepreneurship, it's making app and getting transaction and getting some funded to buy, uh, fund it and then growing big, not in terms of real contribution to the society or not in terms of real business interest or yes service is important but if everybody is going to service who is going to buy the product who is going to make the product that's the way to look at it so we have issues with our mark based system it's more not knowledge oriented skill oriented but still also half baked skills for example if you call any engineering students in india and ask him what are the parts in a mobile phone you will you will jump out of the window including the teacher or you ask any mechanical engineer or automobile engineer to go look at the parts he will not answer right so you will tell i am not a diploma holder no it's not like that it's not like that. You, if you are a designer, you design it completely. No? You make it from scratch. You know? So our curriculum or our education system should provide the path where the student can identify a skill and move from one path to another path very easy. Syllabus, they're trying to update, but still it's not up to standard. Lack of quality teachers with passion, that is a major, major problem. Lack of innovation and research, we boast about. For the sake of getting a PhD, for the sake of getting a master or a HOD position principal, People publish papers and there are business around it and none of them are ranked anywhere, respected anywhere in the world, except one or two. So uh, that is a major problem. Truth, truth is something missing in a country which I always talked about truth. And the uh, faulty education system and how students are being admitted and forcibly asked to learn something which they are not interested and lack of proper skill-based system. For example, if you take European countries, the German system, we have Fakak School A, University A, Technical University A, and then we also have, so they have the option to choose. Now they've implemented in the NEP, but how long it will be implemented and for a, such a large country with diversity, how far it will take a shape, I'm not sure, right? So the more focus has been made because most of our colleges are basically training centers, but as the IT is gaining down, because many of the services can be provided by automated software using MI, you don't need uh, 10 people to do that work. We can have one software engineer who is very good in design and coding, rather than having 10 service engineers. And the rest of the thing, the machine learning algorithms can take care. We don't need so many engineers to work in a service sector, right? So, and the, another thing is the language skills. Yeah, you should learn more language. That is also very important. So these are all already the problems in the system, nothing new. So if you put it, so whatever system has been created in India till now, including the current COVID situation, it mostly focuses on the skill-based memorizing training centers. So how will a university or an education institute can convert themselves from a skill-based memorizing and training placement and training centers to creativity-based solution providers, creators? So that is a major transformation that has to happen, right? 
So that is very, very important. So there are some pedagogy because uh, uh, in, in, in some of the uh, uh, developed countries, you have to have a basic degree, at least a one year degree in teaching to, to start teaching in bachelor's level. Maybe that has to be started in India. Um, but not doing online and then taking it for granted. Mm. That way you cannot transform the education system. So uh, we, we have been more focused towards the apprehensive motive. So it's time for our education system to focus on the comprehensive motives. Right? So that's very, very important. That is missing. So that is one aspect to create the knowledge. And then how to combine the, uh, instead of rather being a translator, because if you compare an online video of an Indian teacher, and I'm not saying everybody is bad, but 70% is nowhere near the quality. So that is true, whether you accept or not, you can just compare in any area, any domain, except one or two of the NPTEL lectures. Yeah, there is no depth, right? We, we try to compare the syllabus and counterfeit the syllabus and then see uh, is successful. And then you get a three lakh package, five lakh package, one person get 10 lakh, you boast about it. But basically what is lacking is the hardcore research ability in the teacher and that is becoming more and more prominent in the coming days that if my teacher is not a leader why should i listen to him and since the student has the access and he is free to decide whom to follow not to follow he has world is open up to him so instead of paying say two or three four lakhs here so so sorry about it sorry 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 my mobile went off sorry about it so, uh, uh, is it, for example, you can sit at home and get a Harvard degree if you're good enough and then go once in three months and do that, hybrid learning. So, um, so this, this has already started. For example, one of the course which I'm doing now in radiotherapy and oil therapy from uh, Vienna Medical School, I have to travel only in three months, but I still get access to the world-class facility in MRI and fMRI and micro CT and all those facilities. So it is possible and that is where the world is going ahead and that is what the education system has to change. So uh, that, that pedagogical content and knowledge creation has to totally change in India. Yeah. So uh, what, what is happening in our current system, we are able to address only the application part. We are not focusing on the analysis part, core and the fundamentals. We are just by them, starting from 10th standard to score marks, and then we fly away, and then higher education, eight semesters, medical engineering, almost same. That's why we have less than 10% highly quoted researchers of papers in the world, right? So application, analysis, core, and fundamentals. So all the four has to be focused at any education. It can be any. It can be design, it can be arts, it can be language, it can be science, it can be technology, it can be management, it doesn't matter. So you cannot avoid technology. If you keep avoiding technology, technology will bite you back. For example, in the COVID situation, it is only technology which is making us survive, right? So, so just saying technology is too much at the same time using it also. Parents are not worried about a student playing games on a mobile, but they are much worried about the student playing the mobile and listening to lectures for one hour. They comply, right? So that's that's a hypocritical mindset, and you cannot you cannot you, you cannot avoid technology, and it is a must, right? So the traditional tools have to be slowly merged with the modern tools. Now, how to do that? And that is very important in any learning environment or any educational institute. That is very much important. How to do that? You cannot skip the world because world is gold and that is a basis, that is a foundation. But you can use technology to sharpen the foundation in such a way that everything is blended together. Right? For example, uh, instead of having a class on a Zoom, you can have a class on a Facebook. That makes it very interesting. There are some universities which are doing it, it's very useful. And then so the student thinks that this is a medium of uh, interaction, not just for, it is also a medium of learning. So integration is very much an important part. right? Uh, this is the, some of the aspects I've mentioned from uh, new education policy. These are their goals, but I'm not sure how far they are going to achieve it because of the huge uh, differences in facilities and infrastructure. But I hope they do that. But what is, should be focused in, in a higher education level? What is missing and what is important? What is missing is flexibility. That is a major problem all these years. It is nothing play based. There is no role for playing. It's all about mugging up and vomiting out. Whatever change you bring. There is no multi-level, it is one level, that is another problem. It is not multi-faceted, that's another major problem. It is not activity-based, it's so boring. Some of the lectures we cannot even, it's very difficult for students. Blaming a younger generation is not the thing. It's our generation which has to change, which has to change our setup, which has to change our infrastructure to suit to the modern learning environment, to be highly competitive. Otherwise, this country will always remain a service country. It can never become a power country. Yeah. 
So abstract concepts on how do you explore, how do you explorative learning, interactive classrooms, last 10 years, AACT and all this MCI and this and that, everybody said, I have LGD, blah, 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 nothing happened. One COVID came, everybody's compelled, whether you like young, old, new, doesn't matter. Everybody has to come online. So that is interactive class. Another important thing, applied intelligence is zero in India. So that is where experiential learning is going to play an important part. So you cannot just teach everything online. So it has to be combined with implementation. So how you can guide through online education to implement what theoretically you have taught. That is going to make a, a major role in the future. Another important aspect is inquiry-based learning. <coughs> that is uh, that, 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 that is how in case of the classrooms. That is another question mark I have. I don't think it is that inquiry-based. And discovery-based learning is zero. So forget it. So all this can be summed up to multidisciplinary that is lacking critical thinking. Yeah, for the for the sake of uh, placement, you make them read Sakuntala Devi, some aptitude testing center. That is not real. Spontaneity is real intelligence. Now, you are standing in front of a tiger. How you are able to handle the situation is more important. And then by hearting and repeating it thousand times is not going to solve the problem, right? Even if a branch falls down, the tiger is going to eat you. So, so yes, simulation is important, but you cannot live by simulation. That is the aspect of critical and flexibility. I think the new NAP will provide it. Vocational, sorry, that's not part of our curriculum, but that has to become a part of it. whether you study MBA, BE, MBA, ABCD, doesn't matter. Arts, music, whatever you may be, you need one vocational in every course, right? So, a few of the things I have put, and uh, uh, like many of the I am. Most of the management institute have suddenly jumped into data analytics, and it was there. It was there, like software as a statistical statistics as a software as a SAS. It was in different forms, and and then and SAP system and vendor and product and like to that is SAP. So uh, German 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 original German word. It's a German product, not an Indian product, right? So 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 so, so the the the. the the way you implement it, so how it can become part of your syllabus. You cannot avoid technology. What happened to management education just 10 years back, many have to close, close down because the supply was more, the demand was less. Number two, they never adopted the modern technology-based education. Now everybody's running to give, everybody's in within one month, six months, everybody's an expert in data analytics, in Python. It's like teaching a six-year-old without knowing what is the use of coding if you don't know where to apply it. No? So, for example, if you have ARM 7 processor and if you want it, or if you have a Raspberry Pi microcontroller and you want to program it, you understand Python, you, you see the implementation in, immediately. I see some of the advertisement online, they are asking six standard guy, learn this, learn that, you will become NASA, this, that. It's all illogical. You know, you know, you have to express your creativity. You cannot start coding without knowing why I'm coding. You know, there should be a purpose, there should be an application, there should be a basic, there should be a foundation. So. So this is very important. So coming back one full circle. So what is that? What is it? It is all about technology. You cannot live without technology. You cannot bypass technology. You have to accept technology, learn to use it and move forward. The more you resist it, more it is going to come, come back to you. Like COVID. So and another important aspect that is missing in our education system is how all these things are interrelated? It is convergence of technology, which is already tried to explain it. You cannot have, for example, you buy a glucose meter to measure. It has biotechnology, it has programming, it has uh, hardware, it has biology, everything is interrelated. So, and what happens when it comes to management, you think a management guy should not read science and technology, it's illogical, no? So, because management itself is becoming more technology oriented. So you have to infuse more technology into it. So this is the what I already explained. I'm putting in a slide so it is easy to understand the connectivity between science, engineering, and technology. And then what is it? What is it that is missing? So if you are able to understand how things work in nature, then it is science. If you put in a very proper technical definition, and if you are able to design and build what you learn artificially, it is engineering. And if you are able to use it for multiple purpose, then it is technology. Theory, practical, and implementation. Memory and analysis, natural intelligence, skill development, and applied intelligence. We are lacking too much in these two parts. We are very successful in this part. That's why we produce more service uh, service class uh, population. But we are very poor in these two parts and this part. Also. 
knowledge. This we are gifted naturally, so no need to worry. Everybody's almost same, so it doesn't make any difference. So what we have to do? So we have to bring this intelligence, memory, everything together and put them all into experiential life. That is the only way you can take that to home. So if you see what is the classical psychology of a young kid, and if you're not able to replicate at higher education level, you're going to miss it much. So that is why I put the same diagram here as well as in the beginning of the lecture. So, and today everything is about AI and robot. You cannot run away it, you have to accept it, right? So then we talked about how to measure creativity. So we'll come to this part. I think it is one hour is over. If you want to take a break or something, you can type, I can check it in the chat. Or can I continue? Hello? Anybody out there? Yes, sir. We are listening to you. So should I continue, ma'am, or you want a break? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, no, Please sir. Continue, continue, sir. Continue, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> So next is we understood what is uh, uh, how science engineering technology is related. We are started with the current situation. What is lacking in our education system? And now we'll go into the, I spoke a little bit about creativity, but if we want to measure creativity, these are all interrelated. Huh? So if you want to measure creativity, what are the basic things you should know? What are the basic things you should understand? You should understand there are two aspects to, 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 to brain science. One is your mind aspect. What is the physical brain, huh? the neurons, no? The neurons which make the brain so 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 the brain and the mind you keep it i'm not talking about some metaphysics i'm talking real science here. Yeah. so please don't confuse um so we, we 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 go from the brain and the mind and then we go about the engineering part i'll skip all these things and the technology part also we can I skip so much so it is just for an understanding how to measure it it will be last three slides but if you have some idea about what i'm talking about it helps you where the future is going and what are the things that is missing also, right? So when you talk about matter, that is what is the brain made up of as such, there are many things. I'm not going to this basic aspect because there are so many things we have, you know, or some of you have studied or some of you are expert in this field. So I will not repeat it, but you can Google online and listen to some better lectures about each and every field than uh, what I could say about these things. So that is the brain science is the matter. And then, we have the mind, which I already tried to explain to you in this concept. So these, if, 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 if this process has to be enhanced, uh, that is where education com comes into picture, right? So that is what we are artificially trying to educate the person as such. Yeah? So then, then comes the next part of it. So like we have science, engineering, and technology. For example, I, here is all. For example, this, this is science, engineering, technology. You, you, you see what is happening around, we call it aerodynamics. That is science, no? aerodynamics. You understand how the pressure works, how the drag works, how the pull works, in fluid dynamics or aerodynamics, whatever you want to call. Then if you use that science, how a bird flies, for example, that is aerodynamics because four wings, uh, some of the hind wings have been uh, modified. So it's, 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 this aerodynamic, this science, you convert into technology, then it becomes avionics or aviation. And how you build is aviation engineering. Same with the biology. Biology, you study the cell, plant cell or animal cell, and then you talk about it. So that is biology. You try to build system out of it, that is biotechnology, but how to build the biotechnological systems, then you go for engineering. For example, you want to construct a PCR. Yeah? So if you want to construct a PCR, what are the engineering going to do? That is bioengineering. Yeah? That is one subset of bioengineering, right? For example, you can have optical science, optical engineering, Photonics application. So that is science. Similarly, when you talk about cognitive science, or cognitive technology, or brain science, we talk about <clears throat> the two aspects. In this, the complexity is little more because we have to talk about the biological matter that is your brain, and we also have to talk about the mind which is inside your brain, your thought, the feeling of yourself, the, th the thought process, who you are, identity. You know, that you have to talk about. Right? So it also can be related. Brain science, brain engineering, brain technology, or neurotechnology. Mind engineering, cognitive engineering, mind technology or cognitive technology. So this is the matter part. This is mind part. And if you talk about neuroscience, we have to talk about the linguistic availability, the philosophy of mind. And here comes the most important part. Sorry. Here comes the most important part, the artificial intelligence. Now, anthropology is how we evolve, right? That's a different story. So this is the artificial intelligence. 
So then if you talk neuroengineering, there are two aspects of it. Either you replicate what is in the neurons, like artificial neural network, ANNs, or you try to understand, repair the existing system. So that is, you make a neural system and then you interface it with the external world, right? That is brain machine interface, what we call BI, right? So then you come to neuroengineering, there are three component states, one is bioinformatics, bioelectronics, and biomems. But we are all trying to build something that is integrated to each other, that is biosystems, which are a little bit of electronics, a little bit of information technology, a little bit of minds, right? And then when you talk about neuroengineering, we are talking about how to manipulate the existing structures, which is already there, like neurostimulation or neuroaugmentation, neuroprosthetic, now functional. And one aspect is brain machine, which is the basis. See, uh, there is a big talk, cognitive technology, one subset of cognitive technology is artificial intelligence. And one subset of artificial, there are two aspects of artificial intelligence. One is software part, and the other one is the hardware part, right? The hardware part is what I'm talking about, neuroengineering or cognitive engineering, blah, blah, blah. And the software part is how to replicate the naturally available machine learning. You can use algorithm, you can use some other process, so all those things come into picture, right? Neuromechanics, neural prosthetics, many things are there. Cognitive engineering, sorry, cognitive engineering is all about human system integrations, yeah? So it, it's, it's how when a human is put in a perspective of a system, how his mind works, how he is able to interact, right? So that is where this interaction comes into picture. That is cognitive engineering. It has four aspects. One is human factors, human machine interface, psychology, and system engineering. Now, neurotechnology is all about replicating what is already there in your brain. Right? So that is the neurotechnology. So uh, uh, many people think that it will be very difficult to build an artificial system in the next coming years in a very fast time. But definitely, it is going to be built in 100 years or 200 years. But you can see some of the glimpses even now. Now you have a pen drive which has more memory, and then you have computer vision, machine learning is there, you can talk, it can respond, speech recognition is there, artificial robotics, all this combined, we have already artificially changed many things to do artificial. Again, it all comes back to the basic aspect which we discussed, that is the five senses, right? So, what is this mind? What is the mind? The mind is the important aspect of our learning process which actually regulates our thought process, memory, the decisions that we are taking, the personal identity, and our imagination. So basically replicating mind is not so easy. That is human cognition and human emotions are not very, very easy. But some of the works are doing, I can skip this just to tell you, you can refer this paper, it's very interesting. So scientists are, some research groups are trying to do how they can replicate the functionality of a neuron. And they're also talking about artificial emotion and artificial uh, whether it is possible to provide. Now, how we work with this, this technical part, I will not go with you, but how to manipulate the thought process that we can do, that is called neuromodulation, and there are many techniques. Uh, for example, the most common, I can see electrocardiography and brain stimulation, these are two common techniques, but this can be also be used to in, increase your uh, ability to think. So, I will skip this very difficult part, but what is important is that uh, this part is very important. So we, when we talk about our brain and creativity, we didn't get all these capacities in day one. No. It took 200,000 years to develop this. So our brain weight was only 800 grams 1.6 million years ago as a homo sapiens sapiens. Huh? Homo sapiens sapiens, that's the right way to say it. So, but our brain has been changing and adapting new technology, new learning centers, say, and reached around 1,300 grams around 0 0.2 million years ago. And today we are in the cusp of crossing the 1,400 benchmark. That is brain weight in terms of grams. So we started with arts around 60,000 to 70,000 years ago. Language math, 5,000 to 6,000 years ago. Science, modern science, 3,000 years ago. Modern computers, 70,000, 70 years ago, sorry. And today we are going to try to understand what the brain is itself, right? So there are different research projects. Some of you want to study further, you can look at it because this domain allows anybody from any field to work together. And then scaling is another important factor, but I will not go into this. Maybe in the next part, we can understand the scaling. <clears throat> so, we, so what I wanted to say is it is possible to plot and understand what is happening in your brain in a straight way, right? So we have different technologies do that. And uh, so I'll go to one simple tech. Ah, this is the thing. 
So we can understand that it is possible to map how our brain works using functional magnetic resonance imaging, right? Which part of your brain is active and which part is not active, right? So they have published a paper and it's a very interesting paper. I've given the reference, you can check it out. This paper is very interesting in 2018 paper where they took 163 participants, gave them two tasks. While they were sorting out the task, they kept them under the fMRI. They plotted their fMRI and they gave uh, two types of tasks. One is an alternative use task. One is object characters. That is to test their cognitive abilities, uh, basically to test their creativity and non-creative. To segregate a population, say 163 people, how many of them are creatively able? How many of them are creatively not able, right? So we basically have, so what they used, they used a measurement technique called divergent. What is it? When you, for example, divergent thinking gives you multiple, multiple, diverge, converge, multiple, convex, concave, same thought process. Yeah? Convex and concave lens. So it is the same thought process. So when you think in multiple angles, you diverge, multiple solutions for the same problem, diverge. So how to measure it? We call it as entropy or in better way to put it is degree of intelligence, but easy to understand is entropy. Whenever you talk about entropy, we are talking to measure. So how an individual is able to give uncommon, remote and clever answer. It can be measured as a measure of their thinking, creative ability. <coughs> so there are three basic network in the brains which enable our creative thought process. So one is called the default mode network. The other one is called executive control network. And the third one is called salient network. So default mode network is when you are not sleeping, but your brain is idle, it is chewing something. It is thinking about something. That is a default mode network. In the executive control network, you are, it is basically like a control. It is executed. It is basically there to, control your emotions and direct how to allow it it, it it determines how to use the different resources for different purposes for example for attention for decision making for choice and salient is basically two important aspects it took one what are the things i should take inside the brain and what are the things that i should not take inside the brain not to remember not to do. so all these three network work in tandem to impose the creativity of a person, right? Say a person's creativity is dependent upon the integrative work of default mode network, executive control network, and salience control network. So these three network of, we have more than 100 billion neurons in our brain, right? So basically neurons transmit signals and we'll not go into the detailed scientific aspect, but basically these neurons have three basic networks, default mode network, executive control network, and salience network. So these neurons, these set of neurons which perform these network actions are into three parts. So all these three networks have to work in tandem, in sync with each other to execute or to improve your thought process. So how it works. So our brain is a very complex system, right? So it is a complex adaptive network. Adaptive network, if you have studied AI and an artificial neural network, you will understand the system can change it uh, aspects based on the input states. Right? We have different states in our brain. Right? If a person gets drunk, for example, with alcohol, he reaches an excited state. After the alcohol goes out of a body, he comes to ground state. So his mind is in different states. Similarly, our thought process also goes into a different state. Right? So we have our brain is a complex adaptive network. It's a complex adaptive system. And then the system is influenced first five major factors. One is the physical environment, the language we speak the cultural identity, the idea itself, and the social relation. That is your sociology. Hmm? Your, your psychological, your implication of your psychology and the societal aspect. That is the social relation. So these five factors influence this functionality of complex adaptive brain. It's a complex adaptive network. And creativity is embossed in it. So a default mode, when your brain is idle, it gives your idea. The executive mode, using your emotions and your history, evaluates it and then the salient mode actually network execute identified yes this is the right method let's go so what we do it is a multiple state right so you think about the idea over a period of time and come up how to execute it in 
okay so basically what happens you get the data for a long time and then you evaluate it and then finally identify what is good and then you implement so creativity follows this process only so we measure it that is the what are the number of possible solutions for each problem right so that is divergent so even our consciousness is a entropy only yeah it can be it is a kind of an entropic system energy system right yeah so now the questions what is the use of education how to bring this kind of creativity to education how to bring this kind of creativity to pedagogy how to bring this kind of creativity to our day to day life and it's very important in the current context in indian education system and if we don't change even post covid i think our many of our education systems are going to face a lot of pressure because the amount of jobs available is going to become lesser and less yes more jobs will be there but we don't have that kind of quality people to work in those kind of jobs right so we have more in the service class rather than the product class that is that the, the covid situation has exposed our education system totally naked it has shown what are the default what is good about us and what is bad about us both has come out equally right so now it is time for us to decide so uh, there is a new term called neuro hr that is using fmri signals or patterns to determine the creativity of a person and then judging and recruiting for example many of the many of the many many many, many, many people have started implementing it many big companies are doing you can just google it and you will find list of companies which have already started implementing neuro hr right so what are these companies trying to do so i i think many of you would have read uh, yuval noah harari one of the famous in the recent time who became very famous for his uh, book on homo sapiens and then homo exodus and everything and uh, if you see one one of his proposal is useful and useless class so what is happening this technological input and except see when, when we were growing up 30 years ago or 34 years ago the amount of information was very less but today you are being bombarded with information so uh, for example in india we show off with high five words are ye kar raha hai wo kar raha hai he is very big he is very small um, bus words what you call bus word that is good for marketing but not in the long term yeah? so, so we, marketing can sell for certain time but if the quality of the product is very less nobody is going to buy the product like that is the, that is the basic so uh, so 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 the, the neuro hr is already being implemented so you are going to have two class of people useful and useless so the future is all about and covid 19 has given is openly told the world these are the useful people and these are the useless people and that is why you see a discontent among different countries and different populations and that is going to exemplify him and it is not going backwards it is always going to increase right so if you take such an approach if you are able to map the creativity of a person and identify the creativity of a person right if you train him to be a creative a non creative person it is like training a manager to be a manager yeah uh, you whatever it is end of the day is it not identical crisis is it not implying his free will is it not a conscious effort to change what is naturally born no we have to answer all these three questions but end of the day it is only simple if you want to be a creative society if you want to be, believe in science and facts and not on not 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 you are not you, you cannot have your leg one leg in the river and one leg in the sand no it's not possible to be on both the sides no you know need to take a side but you can be have a balanced approach so how to look at it how you reject are you going to boast and continue to provide service class people are you going to really become even now you have to import rafael from outside india you are not able to make a aircraft here you have 16 lakh engineers the best institutes in the world you boast about it you talk about it you write about it but still you have to input a simple led you have to input a digital thermometer so you have to import even processes service processes yes 10% people are creative but 10% people cannot sustain 140 crores a 10% people cannot make you a superpower or a powerful country right so that is why we may be the fourth powerful army but strategic wise we are one of the weakest army because 90% of our weapon system is imported it is not created here right so they have the switch button the control button basically to say anyway that's a different topic but basically to is it right to convert a non creative person to a creative person is it right to do the free will choice what about free will choice 
what about the conscious effort of influence on oneself to improve their creativity right so this will discuss about in detail in next class and how to include that in the curriculum see this wall i think many people know the inverted v and i no need to repeat it but still this class is there and this this is how this these things are going to work so i think now it is 3:30 continuously i'm speaking one hour 45 minutes but i hope i will stop here because it's a too long lecture it will become boring i feel so and uh, if you have any questions we can keep it ready so in the next class it's not a class but the next time when we meet again for the same topic i will uh, include that also if you have any questions or anything you can just let me know but if you have any questions you may please put it forward now that uh the chat box if there are any questions to put over there Check the chat box. I don't think, ma'am. Uh, sir, I have told the, for answering Mr. Amardeep Purpawar. Uh, yes. I told in the beginning itself there is two part in this lecture. Today part is to understand the creativity. What is creativity first? In the second part we will talk about how to bring it to the part of the pedagogy. That is on I don't remember the date, but is I think after one week there is a session again. One minute, I'll check. In the next week, we'll do it, ma'am. The next part. <clears throat> I don't think I'm getting any questions. Yes, sir. Uh, there was one question posted earlier in the during the session. How uh, education system is faulty? It was, uh, no, we, we, so we cannot blame the education system, ma'am. We have to take the blame ourselves first. Are we before pointing finger at others? Are we worth being a student and a teacher? Then we can blame the system. So the fault come back to us. Yes, that is my opinion. I may be wrong, ma'am. any more questions from the participant side you may also uh, ask it orally if you want so we, we uh, I, i would like to make only one comment ma'am so we will go to the pedagogy part in the next part i have one more lecture okay. After, i don't know the date one minute i'll just check uh, it is on I, i'll just give you the info sir it is on 26th of november at 2 Yeah, same time. So that time it, it is the part two. It is the part two of how to improve the time and passion. Yes, that is where we come to the first part of the topic. Today okay. we understood how to what is creativity, how it is related to education system, and how to measure creativity. In the part two, we will talk about real implementation, how to do that, and how to measure it in the classroom scenario. Yes, ma'am. I don't think any questions, ma'am. Uh, sir, I have no problem. Sir, if, if anybody messages, you can let me know. I will prepare it and answer. Sure, sir. sure, definitely, definitely. So I'd like to place on record my deepest uh, thanks to Dr. Ravindra Henry. It was uh, mm -hmm. very interesting. It was very explanatory and all. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, so thank you, ma'am. Thank you sir. for the next session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you.
நான் வேற காலேஜுக்கு போயிட்டு வருவீங்க